so magic, so raw, so vast, yet so obscure all the same. It is said that the source of one's magic stems from the personal connection your soul bears with the world, Gaia, our mother, anchor of all life. And that is about as far of the wise as I have fleshed out from my urban fantasy world. <laughs> it's been nearly ten years and I still have no idea why my world's magic system does what it does, so let's solve this mystery together, shall we? In the world of the Protector's Wish, post-Catalyst event, if you'd like to find out what that is, click here, Gaian humanoids would be divided into three main categories. The majority of the people on Gaia are born as non-magic users while some can be born as recessive magic users. These individuals are only able to access a portion of their inner soul magic, and can only effectively utilize their power through something called a soul crystal. Magic users, on the other hand, are the rarest type to be found among the bunch, and have full and complete access to their source of power, which they can manipulate and bend as they see fit. I've operated around this set of rules very loosely, so with the help of this set of questions I've pulled up, we should totally be able to make sense of this system for a world of sin, an ancient allegiance set by protectors of the light, war spanning time, and slice of lifey death. Yep, totally. The myth surrounding the Catalyst event says that after a young Alina restored the heart of Gaia and swam in its revitalized waters, Gaia herself granted Alina what she was promised, the power to save what had been lost to corruption and decay for decades. Since then, if you were born with magical capabilities, this means that your soul was given access to Gaia's original spirit, with a personal and natural connection. You are either born as a non-magic user, which is most common, a recessive magic user, for example, one of your parents might have been a magic user, or a full-on soul caster, with no material limit to restrict your magical ability. But in a world where the main genre is urban fantasy, in an alternate 2012-1992, how would this creation myth translate to the people of the modern world? I think, realistically speaking, there's probably going to be some biases for sure among people who can perform magic and people who can't. Even if magic users are the rarer type to be born as, you know, some, some somebody's going to find something to bully about you, you know what I mean? But perhaps it's just different depending on the culture slash city slash whichever continent you're from. For instance, the Arima are a subspecies of the shapeshifter race and are basically humanoid lizard changelings. They have sort of a caste system in their culture, and even though I can't remember when I first decided this, I think I decided that the upper class felt like they were the upper class because, you know, they were like born with some access to magic, while the rest of the lower clans had none. But in the end, I don't think there would be a chosen or holy group that decides if you're born as a magic user or not. That's just not something that I'd be interested in writing. This is something that I hadn't specifically fleshed out yet, but since I'm still very influenced by the lore of Exandria and Critical Role right now, I think I'm going to make the magic casting process at least somewhat similar to d, &D with verbal, somatic, or material components being needed to cast spells. And if you're a recessive magic user, the material component you'd always need to have is your soul crystal, which is typically worn as jewelry in the modern world. I think I'm liking the idea that your source of power would not just be like a bottomless well, and the amount of spell slots, or spell levels so to speak, you'd have is finite. Something that also comes to mind is the way that I started to write healing magic, specifically in the last side stories episode I wrote. The mother in the episode learned how to heal from the ancient clerics of old. And as a result, whenever she would nonchalantly utilize this power to help her son, the time she had left to live shortened. Dramatically? Spoilers? Thus, the natural limits and side effects would most likely be chalked up to the mortality aspect of your life. Who's to say that nobody's trying? Already. <laughs> but, you know, in, in this world, I think people just see magical elements as a normal part of life. So it's like, I'm like I, I can imagine that it probably wouldn't happen very often. <laughs> people people are taking over the world with different but more equally nuanced reasons, alright. <laughs> I 
honestly don't mind the idea of reskinning familiar terms for the use of a story. Like, for example, everybody can have technical subclasses, but for magic users, it would just be called your magical influence or your magical domain. For non-magic users, it would probably be just like your profession or something. I don't know. I have not found a way to explain this part better. Give me some good ideas, please. <laughs> Okay, so even though we covered a decent amount of ground with these questions, I think why I've personally been so confused over the whys of my own magic system is because I think I wanted to have a feasible reason to explain why Gaia, the supposed anchor of all life, was the source of all magic in a modern world where obviously fantasy is not the leading genre, but instead something that elevates the parts of the story that are contemporary. I also didn't want the system to be explicitly similar to d and inspired magic systems like Critical Roles, <laughs> where the root of all magic came from a divine pantheon of gods, so what's another solution that we can come up with? Perhaps this can be a situation where the gene to perform magic stayed dormant in the first guy in humanoids during the primordial age of peace until the catalyst event awakened something new. But then this brings up questions like, okay, who is Gaia? Is it somehow just a name they call their version of the earth, a god, or the anchor of all life? Like what is it? And if it were just a name, why is it said that performing soul magic is just outwardly projecting your natural connection to Gaia's spirit? Like who, uh, who wrote that myth to begin with? <laughs> Perhaps this could just be solved another day, honestly. <laughs> or we could all just talk it up to suspending our disbeliefs, but knowing me, I probably won't be satisfied until I find a better answer to reveal in the, sh in the show. In the show, as these episodes slowly come out. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening to me yap. Thanks to my awesome friend Kufin for this video idea inspired by Rit Finch's super cool lore video about their own gothic magic system. See you next time.